projects that we have on. So that's what we've been doing. How have you been? Up and down? Yeah. How are you finding the, the pathway to God? Riddled with rocks and... <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Falling rocks. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it, how when we first hear divine truth, because a lot of it's external in its nature, it feels really good to know, doesn't it? But then when you start getting into your own personal life and your own personal problems and changing life, your soul your personally, then it becomes very difficult for the majority of people because we are so invested in our addictions, a lot of the times we are complete denial of any that we have any addiction when we begin, mm -hmm. and so it's the the difficult part is the personal part, isn't it? Have you found that? Like accepting universal truth is relatively easy in comparison to accepting the truth about yourself and actually working your way through that emotionally. Yeah. So what we'd like to do today is give you the opportunity to ask questions about that. Um, so we can help you a bit with those kind of issues. And we've got the board if we need it for uh, just doing a few diagrams and things like that for you. So you want to proceed? Or do you want to go home now? <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, who would like to go first? Catherine. So, Catherine, you want to go first? If the mic's coming down. Oh. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Are we right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, about eight weeks ago, mm -hmm. I went to see a man who says he's a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. um, and um, he lives in uh, Tenderfield. Mm -hmm. um, since then, I've been in a great deal of pain. Physical pain? Pardon? Physical pain? Physical pain, yep. yes. Um, I did, um, I did. I do have a lot of coughing, but mm. it's stopping. Um, about a week ago, I stopped vomiting, and my temperature went down. I used to get a temperature about four o'clock every afternoon. Right. Yep. Um, and it's all. Um, he said it's all muscles and tendons. It's not joints and things like that. Yeah. And so muscles and tendons, I believe, is resistance. Um, I've also had, because I can't walk properly or lift my feet properly, I've had two falls. Yeah. Both of them have been on my left side yeah. and both of them have uh, hurt the left knee more. I kind of feel that that's more self-punishment yeah. um, than anything else. Um, I know um, by the time that I started uh, primary school, um, I was so rigid at that time, I, I couldn't touch my toes or anything like that. So I'm presuming that it's... So you've had a lack of flexibility in your body all, all, the, my life. all your life, pretty well, much. Well, yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, since I can remember anyway. Yeah. And I imagine that is all coming from... Um, um, the projections I got from my parents um, and the blame, well, the hatred, actually. Yeah. Um, that you my received mother, a lot of hatred from your parents. From my mother, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, well, my father died when I was three and a half. Yeah, so. from mum in particular. So. Yes, mm. yes. Um, hatred and blame and jealousy and... Mm -hmm. um, and blame, you know, I was blamed for everything. I was blamed for the rape. I, I was blamed for my father's death. I was blamed because there wasn't any money. And they were the big things, you know, but I was blamed for all the small things as well. Yeah. And I just wonder if, um, you know, a lot of stuff has been coming up. You know, I've, I've <laughs> crying quite a bit about the pain, but I've been just sitting on the bed and... Quite often, just rocking backwards and forwards, a little bit like a child with um, yeah, yeah. Aut autism. Yeah. Um, there's been. Um, did, did you know? Have you noticed that when you cry with the pain, 
has the pain gone away or is it... It or seems it to get a little bit better for a, a, a short while. For a while. short period. Yep. And there's... Um, I've been screaming. I've been making funny noises. A lot of guttural, yep. guttural sort of noises coming up. Yep. Um, and they're all things I don't... They just happen, you know. Yeah. And yesterday I just kind of started whimpering and carrying on and that went into... Um, um, crying and um, and there's also been um, quite a bit of fear. There's been the hot flushes with the shame. You yeah. know, I mean, there's just been all of this sort of stuff. But it's mm. been but it's pretty intense. Yeah, it's and it's been going intense. on for two months. Yeah, months. yeah. Since you saw him, basically. Yes, and I think that he actually released all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, and, and so he's triggered some parts of the body that have. Let yes. Started letting go yes. of things, yeah. Yes, I, I, well, I don't know whether it's letting it go. I seem to be resisting it. <laughs> um, yes. So the questions, can I summarise your questions for you? Or do you want no, to summarise? No, no, no. <laughs> no, you can say whatever you like. Okay. <laughs> um, so one of the questions is about the pain, isn't it? Like, why is there so much pain? Mm. That's one of the questions. Another question is that you are concerned about how long this is going on yes. and what's happening with it in terms of what's going to happen. Basically, I've done nothing for two months. Yeah. I've done the basics around the house and that's yeah. it. You've managed to, because you live by yourself, you've yes. managed to obviously eat occasionally still <laughs> to have yes. something to throw I've up. lost about five kilos. Yes. Mm. Um, but uh, you've had some what I feel... Uh, what, what I'd classify as decent emotional releases about some things and other things you've been in a bit of resistance to. Yes. But um, So if I can basically explain to you what's been happening. The first thing, though, that I'd like to say is the majority of people that start going through this kind of process become very concerned very quickly. Right? We're not used to having these kind of processes in our day-to-day -day life, and so what we have a tendency to do is we have a tendency to judge the process and as a result of judging the process we have a tendency to not allow it to occur for very long. So the average person you know wouldn't normally allow something like that to occur for for a couple of hours let alone a few days or a week and certainly not two months you know they'd be really worried about two months. I've been through processes like that that have lasted up to four years so um, I don't have any concern or judgment about those kind of processes. Does that make sense? Yes. And I've also had a lot of physical pain that in my body that I've had to release over that period of time. Now, if we can first focus on two things that we can do right at the beginning with regard to these kind of things that go on. Eventually, when we make the breakthrough from all of the denial and we start allowing the process to begin, this is the kind of experience we'll have. It will be quite intense. So there will be quite intense releases of fear. There will be quite intense uh, pain in the body and so forth. And I'll explain why that's the case in a minute. But, but what we have a tendency to do at that beginning point is that we don't trust God through the process. So what we do is we start to go into a bit of a panic about the process. And when we go into a panic, we actually add to the pain of the process. Does that make sense? Yes. So the fear of the emotion and the fear of the pain causes the pain and the emotional pain to intensify rather than to release. And one of the reasons why we do that is because we don't really trust God. We don't really trust that God's got us in his arms helping us go through a process that we need to go through. If you could, uh, and I have likened this before, to a process of pulling out splinters, if you like, that are in, inside of your body. And, you know, a person can fight the process of somebody taking out a splinter and it's going to be a pretty traumatic process. And if you imagine it as a spear rather than a splinter, because uh, that's what a, a lot of our emotional and, and soul-based issues are like. They're like a great big solid chunk of spear in our body from an emotional perspective where... And we've had these problems often for all of our life or the majority of our life. And it's the problems associated with the first seven years of our life that are generally the most painful. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. 
Now, all of these um, are pains that we've uh, developed and then denied. In the process of denial, we've lived a sort of a state of numbness. And we've lived a state of physical numbness as well. Physical, physically, we've detuned from the pains of our own body. And emotionally, we've detuned from the pains of our emotions. And so we go through life almost like a, what would you call it, sort of like, we're just taking on generally the roles that have been defined to us during our childhood. And then we're basically living a role-based life, almost like an automation robot, living a role-based life for the rest of our life. And that normally is how the average person lives all of their life and then dies. And they die generally from the suppression of the physical and emotional illnesses that they've suppressed during that period of time. And that causes their death in the end. So they die and they, everyone thinks it's normal. They pass into the spirit world and they are still generally in a state of emotional numbness, uh, even after passing. Now, they at some point and we at some point, if we really want to progress in our life, we need to do it differently. We need to take, take action to do something differently to that. And so what, what we're encouraging is doing this now, of course, which is the process you've begun. Now, with this, with this man that started, and basically what I would classify him doing with you is body work. He's basically triggering the muscular system of your body. Most of our emotions are actually do have a physical connection to certain parts of our body. So every part of our body that um, is currently... Con is currently con me. connected to an emotion, usually emotion we've suppressed. And remember, most of these emotions we've suppressed all of our life. Now, I don't know if many of you have tried to hold a position, like with a weight, hold a position for as long as possible in that one place. Like if you pick up a weight, you know, you pick up something's heavy, and even it doesn't have to be too heavy, you just hold it in a certain position that's uncomfortable, and then try holding it there for a minute and two minutes and three minutes, and five minutes, and ten minutes. Now, if you ever get to an hour, which most people actually don't, what starts happening? All this lactic acid builds up in your body, all the muscular system in your body starts to... And you start even using your mind to detune from the pain. And in fact, you can almost completely detune from the pain that your body is obviously feeling. But, but when you take the weight away and then try to move that arm, what's it like? That's when you feel the extreme pain. You, do you understand? And your soul's a bit like that as well. All of your life you've been in denial of specific emotional pressures, emotional pain, and that have a relationship to all of the physical pains in your body, and you've been in denial of them, holding on to them. And denial can be right from denial through to having your addictions met with them or avoiding, and, and avoiding your fears, of course. So all of that denial is like a build-up of pain over life, over your life. Now, by the time we hit half a century old, that's a lot of pain that's now built up over a long period of time that we've been completely desensitised to. Now, when we start doing body therapy of some kind, like some kind of body work, the majority of times it circumnavigates the mind. It, 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 it stops the mind from interfering with the, what's going on in the body. So in other words, if, if the average person thinks about their emotions, they will generally not get into their emotions because they've used their mind for the majority of their life to deny their emotions. And so their mind has become a tool of the soul-based desire to deny. So everything you do in your mind generally at that point, so the, and this happens very usually by the time we're seven years of age, it's well established, and then we continue that process right the way through generally through the rest of our life. But in this process of denial, there's a build-up of all this emotion and also a relationship with the build-up of all the pain, physical pain in your body as well. So now you've got two things building up, building up, building up, building up. Now normally we try harder to suppress them. So we, so we suppress the pain through medication, through taking pills and you know, using medical techniques to suppress the pain. 
And the emotional pain, we also have a tendency to suppress that using different techniques, including avoidance completely, or we use techniques, again, reliant on the medical profession, like things like taking antidepressants or some other kind of medication to avoid the emotional pain and so forth. And these particular two things usually happen at the same time. We're trying to do both things at the same time. Because if we allow the physical pain to expose, it will also start triggering the emotional pain. Or if, and if we allow the emotional pain to expo be exposed, it will start affecting the physical pain. So what we do is we suppress both. That's the only way we manage. We think it's managing, I should say. Because it's not actually managing anything, if you think about it. It's, going to, it's building up, building up, building up this emotional pain until such a point that at some point in the future there is going to be some kind of a breakdown, either of the physical body or the emotional self. There's going to be a breakdown of one of those two things. And the extreme breakdown of that is death, yes. uh, the cause of our own death. Now, that's what we normally do. What this man has done is started to trigger a process where your mind can no longer be involved in the process of what's going on at the soul. And by pressuring certain points in the body, there's a, there's a, and your allowance, you're allowing the release of it. Now, in the process of allowing the release, sometimes you get into resistance. During those times, you're going to have more pain. So your pain will intensify at the times when you're going to have resistance. But when you release the resistance, the pain will lessen as well. And in fact, you'll get to the point where you won't have any more physical pain because you know that if you allow the emotional pain straight away, the physical pain won't even be present anymore. So you get to that point. But you're not yet at that point. No, it would no. be nice. No. <laughs> but when you think about it, two months... Ha and how old are you now, Catherine? Um, 68. So you're 68. So in, for two months you've only been doing this process, basically. And this, by the way, is the real process. All of the talking about the process that has happened up till now was just talking about it. This is the actual real process. This is, the pro this is what it's like where you can't avoid it any single day. You just can't avoid what's going on. You can't avoid processing through it emotionally. You can't avoid the physical pain of it. You can't avoid any of these things. That's the real process that we're talking about to people about emotional processing. That's what we mean by emotional processing. So all this conceptualised ideas about emotional processing that most people have, you know, that they think that they can just have a thought and work a way through something and then have a little cry for five minutes, that's not emotional processing. Emotional processing is what you're doing now. Well, at least that's something. That's something, right? <laughs> so, so you're ahead of most of us in that regard because most of us aren't even doing that, right? But the key now is to understand what's going on inside of yourself. Every time you resist an emotion or you resist a pain which, remember, is always caused by an emotion, there will be more pain. Every time you allow the pain or soften to the pain, there will be less pain. And that's the way you learn, after a while, how you can manage all the pain in, in your entire body by just allowing the emotion that the pain triggers. So it is rare now for me to have pain in my body. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. In comparison to the pain I had in my body like eight, nine years ago. It was very, very intense pain all the time in my body. Now it's very rare. But I've had to go through this process. Right. Right? And I've had to trust God that the process is not infinite. In other words, I'm not an infinite being. And since I'm not an infinite being, the emotion that's stored in me cannot be infinite. So therefore, if I release it, at some point, it's all got to go. <laughs> yes. It's not going to go on forever. Now, many people start the process, and after it's been going for a couple of months, they start getting worried that it's going to go on forever. But when that's you think about it... That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. But two months in 68 years, if you work that out as a percentage, that's not a very high percentage of emotional processing when you think about it, is it? No, it's no. not. So I've probably got another 10 years to go. <laughs> <laughs> not of the intensity that you're facing, no. If you keep allowing this process to go on, I'd be surprised if it lasted another year or even another six months. Um, 
it just depends on what you allow as to how long it will last. Obviously, if you tip out a bottle of water slowly, then it's going to take long, longer to empty. If you tip it out quite rapidly and you're able to cope with that and you're, you're, you're trusting God through that process, then it'll happen very, very rapidly generally. And so it won't take years and years. It will take months and months, but not years and years. We can't expect it to take no time at all. We can't expect instant change. Whenever there is an instant change, then we should automatically be suspicious. Right. Because no instant change can occur in the soul. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. The only instant changes that can occur is getting overcloaked by a spirit. <laughs> and they then impose a certain emotion upon you. So that, then there's instant changes. So that's what I'm saying. We need to be careful of instant changes. Instant changes are usually the results of spirit interference in this process. Most other changes, soul-based real changes, are going to occur over a period of time. But how fast that time is will depend on our allowance of what goes on during that period. So what you're experiencing is a heap of emotional release at different times of the day in particular. You're experiencing quite a lot of physical pain which you're having to allow yourself to soften to and feel. And sometimes you get into resistance about that. Yes. Yeah. And therefore the pain intensifies or the interference with spirits intensifies during those times. And that's a feedback system telling you that's not the way to go. The best thing to do is to soften to the process. Yes, right. Well, that's, that's probably good because I think the pain in the last few days has been getting worse. So yeah. presumably I've been resisting it more. Exactly. Now, where the pain is will tell you what you're resisting to a large degree. So where is your pain? <coughs> well, it's basically all over my body, but um, it's more um, f starting from the lumbar vertebra mm -hmm. um, down, down, or down the legs. Mm -hmm. um, yes, but there's also... Can I tell you what that's all about? Not that moving pain? forward, sorry. No, <laughs> it's not about not moving forward. It's about, you see, from a very young age, your sense of worth has been, has been attacked. Not just suppressed, but attacked overtly by, and by in particular, your mother, right? Yes. And you've also had this other problem because it's been attacked by your mother, you often have been attacked in the past by spirits as well during your sleep state, which causes you to not get much rest. In other yes. words, you're always trying to wake up because you don't like what's happening in, when you're asleep. Yes. And as a result, you don't get much physical rest either. Does that make sense? That's right. Now, all of this is occurring because of... The, uh, the pain of this is occurring because of the feeling inside of you that you're not going to cope with how bad you feel about yourself. Yes. Sense. So it's about your self-worth. Yes. Right? And, and that's why it's starting at, at the small of your back, right down the bottom mm -hmm. of your back there. It's, because it's all about your worth and how you see your worth. And, and much of your emotional pain relates to your worth. Does that make sense? Yes. And so this is the emotion, the grief that you're d in denial of or trying to remain in denial of at times, right? Is how bad you feel about yourself. Yes. And you haven't wanted to, up until recently, you haven't wanted to even face it, let alone feel it. So you haven't even wanted to acknowledge it was there let alone feel it. You've been aware that there's been issues. You've withdrawn from society a lot in your life. Yes. You've stayed away from people a lot in your life. And these are all the results of you trying to avoid this emotion of how bad you feel about yourself when you're with people. Does that make sense? Yes, that's right. Yeah. And that grief that, that is right there now, that's the grief you need to let yourself feel if you want the pain to reduce. When you suppress this grief, the pain in your body will intensify. Yes. Does that make yes. sense? Mm, thank yeah. you. Yeah. And so unless you allow that grief to come and surface and allow yourself to process through it, you'll find this lower back pain uh, and the pain and other parts of your body, the muscular parts of your body, will increase until you allow it to, to yourself to experience. 
Now understand that this is not a like this is not you going getting worse. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes. This is actually you you've gone from the point of denying every pain and in the last year that I've known you you've gone from the point of the, the last few years I've known you you've gone from the denial of all of your pain into the acceptance that you have pain. Yes. And the acceptance you have some emotional issues or injuries into an awareness of those emotional issues and injuries and an awareness of the pain and then even a desire when you went and saw this man, a desire to actually start addressing it from a, at, a, at a physical and an emotional level. Yes. So this is quite good progress, Catherine. <laughs> Does that make sense? Well, this, I get, yes, I'm, I'm pleased you're telling me this because I was getting in a bit of despair. Yeah, this is good progress. And, and there is more progress to make uh, in regard to it. But, but think about it this way. You've so far spent two months of this really hard process in 68 years. Yes. So what's that in terms of a percentage? Mm, very little. Right, it's, prob it's probably about one, you know, one fifth of a percent or something like that of, in, terms of, uh, in terms of time, if you like. Yes. Now, even if it takes you one year, you've only spent 2% of your life working your way through an issue that for 99% of your life or 98% of your life you denied. Mm, and restricted my life. Yeah. Completely, yes. And that's not a bad percentage when you think about it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Of course, yes. Yeah. But you see, when we're going through it, we don't think of it that way. No. When we're going through it, it feels like a nightmare. And when we're going through it, we think that there's something major wrong. But the, real, the reality is, the thing that's been major wrong was the 68 years of suppression. Yes. That's the major wrong. That's where all the harm was done. And now you're in a process of undoing that harm. Does that make sense? Yes. But it will be painful because you've denied the pain for that so period long. of time. And it's like holding on to that thing and holding it there, denying the pain of it. And then all of a sudden you realise you're holding it. You take the thing out of your arm and then you try to let go of your arm. And now there's all this physical pain that you didn't even feel before. It's the same process emotionally. Mm -hmm. you, you'll actually go through a period where you become conscious of the pain that you've put yourself through or that others put you through. Yes. Yeah. And that's, the, that's a part of the way of release. And it's also a part of the path to God, unfortunately, when we come from a condition where we've been suppressed. Yes. Yeah. If, if we had all been grown up, if, we've all, if we had all perfect parents who were all at one with God before we came to the earth, we wouldn't have to go through all of that. We'd only go through the pain of what we created. But because we've had this multi-generational injuries passed down, by the time we have five, six, seven years of age, we're very suppressed. We've then carried on a life of suppression. We're going to, once we go through this emotional process, we're going to feel it's quite extreme. And it, and it is quite extreme. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and that's yes. the way it, it will be. Thank you. Yeah. And I, like, I've had those emotionally extreme processes. So when I've talked about emotional processing with most people, they have no idea what I'm talking about yet. Yeah. Because they haven't gone through this process that you're mm -hmm. now going through. Now that you're going through this process... This is the kind of process I've been through. Mm, Does it make you. sense? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it, and it has uh, it is it is very painful physically, very painful emotionally, and uh, and yet, if you if you think about it in terms of time, um, it's not a very large time in terms of the comparison with your life. So the key is uh, to continue learning from the experience. So when you feel this pain. Understand that that's a denial of a certain emotion. So in particular, this pain with your muscular system and the lower, lower back, this is in, in, in particular the denial of the emotional pain associated with why you wanted to withdraw from society, which was all about how bad you feel about yourself, which is all about what your mum has said and done yes. to you in your childhood. That's the pain you're going to now need to let yourself experience, which is going to be emotional. So it's going to be very, it's going to be a grieving process. When you allow that grieving process to occur, you will have less physical pain. 
Thank you. When yes. you shut down that grieving process, because you're now conscious, or, uh, consciously aware of the relationship between emotional pain and physical pain, there will be an awareness of the physical pain that results. Yes. Yeah, so a couple, of, you know, some of the things that happened in childhood, you know, that have come up before, but there's other little things now that are coming up that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that I've got memories about and what happened. Yeah. But there are some things that I've got no idea, you know, still no idea. I'm just crying. Yes. And that's fine because, uh, because a lot of the, the sadness that we develop over our life began in the first two to three years of our life. Yes. And did. much of that we weren't allowed to cry out. In fact, a lot of, you, you know, your own mother used the technique of isolating you whenever you were crying yes uh, which is basically basically a form of punishment about you crying and uh, and she isolated you for sometimes hours at a time uh, not responding to any of your needs at all um, just in order to manage your crying that's right and so this is a method that she she taught you through that process that the only way that you're going to get any attention is by not allowing yourself to cry by not allowing the process of, of, of sadness. And, and that is going to now have to be unlearned. You're going to have to unlearn that, unfortunately. But in the process of unlearning it, you'll have a lot of freedom come to you mm -hmm. as a result. But understand it's going to be an emotionally painful process, and, and, but continue having a desire to do it. Because yes. well, if I you have, don't do yes. it... You no. carry it around more. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it's great that you're allowing it to happen without too much intellectual, you know, mind games that you're playing with yourself there. You, when, you, when the tears coming up, you just allow yourself to cry and you're not worried about what it's about. In fact, you, half the time you don't know what it's about no. and you're not going to know what it's about because you didn't have a developed mind at the time the emotion was suppressed. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. So you're not going to know what some of these emotions are about. You're just going to need to let yourself cry. Thank you. Without, without judging it and without trying to manage it. And if you do that, you'll find your pain will continue to reduce. And as your pain continues to reduce, then you'll understand more the relationship between the emotional pain and the physical pain. And that will help you a lot in future working your way through things. The key, once you begin this process, Catherine, the key is to allow it to go on as long as possible because... What I've found personally is that if you shut down it in the early stages of its development, what it does is it has the effect of dragging everything out later and it makes it much, much more difficult later to get to the bottom of other things. So you're best just going with it rather than shutting it down. And uh, what I see happening for a lot of people is they get a little bit of it triggered and then they shut it down. And that just drags out this entire process much, much longer. Yes. And it's not good for you if you do that. It's far better. What I did was I allowed it just to happen naturally, like, for hours and hours a day. So on the average, probably over the period of time when I, from when I began, on the average I would have cried from four to six hours every day. Right. Right. And the only people that were stressed out about that were people who heard about it. <laughs> Because mm. I was alone, but if I ever told anybody about it, they'd all get worried about me. But I wasn't worried yes. because I, I trusted that I was going through a process with God that I needed to go through to release. Does that yes. make sense? And because I felt that connection with God more and more strongly as I did the process, I knew that it was the right way to go. And so nobody else would have been able to convince me at that time that it was the wrong way to go. Mm. But, but I, I was happy to be alone yes. because, because if, cause if you're around other people you when you're doing that, they're always trying to shut you down, control you with it, push you around, tell you that something's wrong, you should go and see a doctor and all those kind of things. And you don't need it during no. that phase. Yeah. No, no. I, I realise that, yes. Yeah. You know, I quite often wake up at night and I may cry for two hours, but once I start crying, I start praying to God to let me keep crying because... Yeah. It's quite often very difficult to get into this space and, yeah. and I just want to keep, while it's there, I just want to keep crying. Let it out, yeah. Yes, and, and, yeah. and let it go. Yeah. yeah. Now, you should find if you do this consistently for, for a few more months at least 
um, you will find that there will be some major changes in your body as a result. And this is an indication that things are improving. So the loss of weight, for example, <laughs> which is something you've always wanted to do. Oh, I have been thin at different stages, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. But you've always wanted to do it in the sense of it easily without yes. having to change your diet and all those kind of yes. things. And this will happen automatically as you, as you work your way through different emotions. So, so your body changing is a, is a feedback system. Again, another feedback system that God's giving you that, yeah, think this is the right track now. You know, you're on the right track now. The majority of people who have heard divine truth are not yet on the right track because uh, they're not yet willing to go through this body-based physical process that's very emotional in nature. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much for all that. You're no very worries. kind. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah. Have I answered your questions completely, though? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so... The, can I just say one more thing to you, and that is have faith that God has you in his care. Have faith that this process is a natural process. You were drawn through an attraction, the, your own soul attracting a man. It doesn't matter what he believes about emotion or anything. You've attracted a man that's pushed certain buttons in your body. Yes. That's all of a sudden started the release process to occur. This is wonderful. The key for you is to now trust that God has led you to this process and at some point in the future, once that slows down and stops and you'll find, oh, I don't need to go to him anymore because he can't trigger any more of what I've got in me. I need to find something else that can, you know. Yes. But, but at the moment, it's something that's helped you immensely, I feel, to start releasing what, what, what has been a huge amount of terror and lack of, uh, lack of uh, self-worth inside of you and... and if you can engage that for as long as you possibly can and trust God through that process, whether you pass or you stay here on earth, it's it, doesn't going, matter. it doesn't matter. You know the process now. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yes. You know it now, so you know what to do. Right? So whether you pass or stay on earth, you know what to do now. The average person on earth doesn't have any idea what to do and they pass not having any idea what to do and they have to work it out sometime in their future in the spirit world. Um, it's far better to do what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. So just have some confidence in God about the process. Have faith in God and remind yourself that during those times you're releasing, if you, if you stay open to God's love, you will also receive some of God's love during that time and you'll feel that and you'll know that you're cared for then and, and you'll, you'll work through the issues quite well. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're doing good. Thank you. Even though you feel like you're doing bad.